Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all doing today? I'm going to be showing you how to make some super cute little crystal beaded earrings. So they're little beaded balls. Here we go. I'll just show you them just here. Come on, get to focus. So they're really sparkly. They look super effective. Really, really shiny and gorgeous, uh, but really super easy to make as well. So that's the great thing about this particular little design. It's done in such a way that it's perfect for if you're a complete beginner. Uh, even then, it's still nice and easy to get on with and sort of create it yourself. So very, very fun, simple, easy tutorial uh, planned for today. Um, as we've been doing all through August, uh, we do have a sale on uh, this week. So our seed bead sale that we did started last Friday, uh, last Thursday, uh, is ending this weekend. It ends on uh, Sunday night. So if you want to save on your seed beads, uh, the Delicas are on sale, the Preciosa seed beads are on sale, my Yuki seed beads are on sale, and Toho. They're all on sale, all of them. That's last week's. But this week, we've got up to 20%. Well, we've got 20% off uh, our crystal beads. So bicones, donuts, or rondelles, however you prefer to name them. Donuts and rondelles, same thing. Uh, we've also got uh, round crystals. We've got I don't know, what other shapes have we got? We've got all the shapes. We've got bricks, we've got cubes. Uh, there's those little faceted coins that I used a couple of weeks ago. They're on sale as well. It's all 20% off. So there should be a little link there in the description if you want to click on that one where it says view all the crystals. Click on that. It'll take you to the page where you can see all of them and get all of those savings. So anyway, uh, let's... Oh. Uh, have I got sound? Someone says I've got no sound. Have I got sound? Is there audio, everyone? Just checking. Apparently Doris says I've got no sound. Maybe it's just on mute. I don't know. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully I've got audio. Can you hear me all? I don't know. Someone comment in. Um, but yeah. So, uh, anyway. I'll, I assume it should be working. The little audio thing says it's all coming along. So anyway. Uh, I assume it should be working. I'm sure someone else would have said something by now. Uh, great, let's see. Uh, we've got quite a few people here already, which is always nice. Uh, Sarah is here. She was first cab off the rank. She said hello. She was about five minutes early. Uh, so hi to Sarah. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got Bridget here as well. Kay is here as usual. Um, Christina says, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, I agree. Happy Friday. I'm looking forward to my Friday. Friday the 13th today. Uh, Monica is here as well. We've got Jan. Hi, Jan. Uh, she's one of our regulars. Susan is here. She says, these earrings look lovely. I'm glad you like them. Uh, Wayne is here. We've got Stacy. Um, ah, Bridget's in Germany. Lots of names coming in. Stacy Bayliss is here. Bayliff is here. Uh, Jackie's here. Um, who else have we got? Ellie Williams is here as well. Uh, Susan Philcox. Loads and loads of people. Eugenie is here. Wow. I'm like, uh, this is a name I don't recognize. Uh, Karen, she says hello and she can hear me just fine. So good news. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Um, here's another one. Uh, Alta from South Africa. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Who else is somewhere interesting, somewhere different, somewhere exotic and far away? Uh, we've got lots and lots of people here. Yep, loud and clear. It's all coming through telling me uh, that everyone can hear me. Excellent. Good. I'm glad. So yeah, uh, in case you missed it real quick, I am going to show you how to make, unfortunately I don't have pierced ears, these super cute little earrings just here. So I don't think they quite go with my, uh, my beard and facial hair, but hopefully they'll be slightly nicer on you than they will on me. Uh, but let me show you them uh, on the bead mat just here. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. But like I said, it's a nice, simple design uh, that we're going to do to make these. There's a couple of ways of doing this, but there's one which I've sort of decided is the easier way. So I'm going to show it that way. Uh, but basically, if I can zoom out, camera's nice and zoomed in. 
maybe a little too far. So yeah, here we go. Here they are. No, ta-da, come on now. Ta-da. So here we are. These are them just here. So each one uh, I've got, I've made these, you can see they're super sparkly. I've made these with four mil bicones um, uh, in there. You can make them with three mil, you can make them with six mil, you can make them with whatever size beads you want, as long as you're all using the same size of bead. I thought I had extra ones of these floating around somewhere, but they appear to have gone missing. I made a really big one. I can't seem to find it. Hopefully Jermaine's listening and she can bring it in. I made one with seed beads as well. It's all the same design. And I made one that's just pearls, but I'll show you them. Um, as long as you're using all the same beads, uh, it works out perfectly to make a little ball. Um, so, yeah. I've also got some little diagrams. Oh, I just realized my face isn't up there in the corner. Let's see if I can sort that out. Where are you, Mr. Mini Face Camera? Ta-da, I'm back. Okay, now we can see me. Uh, yeah, so if you missed last week's tutorial, just real quick, I'm gonna show you uh, this one just here. This is what I made in last week's tutorial. Uh, I did it with a bead spinner. So if you haven't seen a bead spinner before and you don't know what they are or how to use them, uh, go and grab, there should be one with all pearls as well, I think, Mum. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, go check out last week's video uh, if you want to see how to use a bead spinner and how to make this gorgeous braided, uh, as it's called in the US, or plaited in the UK and Australia, as I hadn't learnt until just this week gone. Uh, that's how this seed bead brace necklace is made. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Susan says there's no reason these uh, these earrings shouldn't look good with a beard. Well, you know, maybe I uh, I could be on Eurovision with my beard and a big blingy earrings, and and for Australia instead of Austria. Uh, here you go. See, look, it's really easy to do the exact same design, but by using slightly different beads, you get completely different sizes and textures and looks. So this one here, it's done all in pearls. This one is done with pearls and crystals. And this one is pearls, crystals and seed beads. They're all exactly the same. Uh, you don't have to put a bead in the center, but I'm going to go through that if you prefer the hollow look. Uh, but yeah, let's let's get plain, shall we? It's not going to take too long to make, uh, which is always good. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, I'm going to be using some of my little crystal beads just here and pearls. I'm using four mil, in case you're wondering, uh, which I have precision pearls on our on our website. We've got both precision bicone per, uh, double A grade bicones, which are ultra sparkly, really, really high quality. If you're a fan of like uh, Swarovski style beads, our precision bicones are the ones to go for. Otherwise, um, we also have our bicones on strands, which again, they are absolutely lovely. They're very, very similar, but the precision ones are a little bit sparklier, but also the shape is very, very precise. So whichever you prefer, that's up to you. They're both on discount. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be using these really lovely sort of rose quartz color ones. They're sort of ultra sparkly. I think they're lovely. And then with that, I have my four mil, uh, I'm using satin pearls. So these ones are made by Preciosa. Uh, the little pearls just here, they are again, really, really lovely satiny soft that give it uh, sort of a really nice contrast to the crystal. But you can use whatever beads you want. You can use six mil beads, you can use three mil beads. It's entirely up to you. So anyway, I've got myself a nice piece of thread just here. Obviously, you'll want to use a thread. Let's see if we can see this one. Yeah, we can see it there on the mat. You only need about one meter per earring. So you don't need very much at all. A meter is more than a enough. A yard, uh, if you work in the old money. Um, and then essentially, we just need one little beading needle as well. So I'm using the size 11 beading needle. Yes, yeah, size 11 beading needle. Um, so that's the standard size that we always use. Uh, but if you order any of our spider on thread in the past, uh, you'll have one of these size 11 needles coming with your your um, 
your thread there. Let me just uh, shift my chair in a little closer. Just realize the camera is a bit further away than it usually is. So I'm going to shimmy myself a bit closer to the camera uh, so that I will make sure I stay nicely in shot. So anyway, uh, I've got my little needle just here. I've put a, uh, a thread on one end of the needle just here, just there. And uh, now I can continue on as it were. So essentially what I'm going to do is pick up, I've got diagrams today. So I know you guys like the instructions when I have instructions. So I'm going to show you um, uh, how, how, it, how it looks. So essentially I'm going to create a ring of five beads. We're working in little uh, pentagon shapes just here, little groups of pentagons. So the first one that we need, we need two crystals, one after the other, which you'll soon see, it becomes like the core. We're, we're going to make our ball as like a single flat piece and then join the two sort of ends together. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to start with our first little ball. So two crystals, one pearl, one crystal, one pearl. That's going to be our combination of five beads just there. Uh, so I'm going to just pick some of these up and then I'll bring the camera back over to to what I'm doing. Here we go. So wait, there we go. Just fade that in there. There we are. So you can see I've picked up two crystals, one pearl, one crystal and one pearl there. So there's your five beads that you're going to need. I'm going to just slide them all the way down towards the end. I don't need this bit of tail thread. I'm going to just keep enough so that I can weave it in at the end. I don't need it for anything else beyond that. So I've got all five. Because I want to make it into a ring shape, I'm going to thread through them all, all five beads, once more. So come on, through that last one as well. There we go. Through all five of those beads once more. And that's hopefully going to create a nice little circle. So I can tie these two ends together and it will bring it nicely into a circle. So left hand over the right, pull it tight and there you go. There's a nice little beaded ring. Our first ring of beads, there it is right there. I'll zoom in a little so that we can see it a little closer. Uh, so there you are. I've tied once, I'll tie it twice but not three times, uh, so that it's nice and secure and I don't need to worry about it coming undone or anything. The nice thing about this design, which makes it good for beginners, is it's not the end of the world in terms of um, keeping a nice firm tension. So anyway, um, obviously it's important, but it's not the be all and end all. We can fix it at the end. So. Um, Oh, Seema's just joined us. She says, uh, hello, everyone, and Matthew. Uh, lovely to see you, Seema. Thanks for joining us. And then Kay says, yay, the diagrams are back. I love them. Oh, just to let you know, um, I'm going to put these diagrams, all of them, for free into our bead group. Uh, so if you um, want to get the diagrams, uh, you can have them for free. We're going to stick them in the files section on our Bead Spider Facebook group. So there is a link to that where it says, you know, don't let the fun stop after the stream. If you follow that, it will take you to our bead group. I'm going to put the file on there for free for whomever is watching this. It'll be there pretty much indefinitely, but then you can get those diagrams. Uh, Maxine's just joined. Uh, she says, I'm a little late to the party. I'm prepping lamingtons. Uh, it's my birthday tomorrow. So Maxine's making me lamingtons, which if you've never heard of those, it's like a, an Australian cake um, sort of dipped in chocolate and then covered in desiccated coconut. So I'm looking forward to that. But that's that's my birthday present from her. Uh, so, right, I'll show you the next diagram now. So if we, no, pop it back over here. Here we go. So I've made that first little ring. Uh, in fact, I will flip my camera into right-hand view so that uh, it makes more sense. So look, ready? There's the diagram. And in right hand, here are my beads. So two crystals over on the edge, a pearl, a pearl, and a crystal there as well. That's how we're going to start. Now we want to make sure we're exiting from the second of... Um, 
the second of those crystals. So j between the the second crystal and the pearl, that's where we want our thread to be exiting. Once it's exiting from there, what's going on, Mr. Instructions? Why aren't you changing? Come on. Where's the next picture? There we go. So once we've got our next little one, we're going to pick up one crystal, one pearl, one crystal, and one pearl. Then we're going to run through the, uh, the, the crystal that we're exiting and the first crystal that we added in this step. So if I bring that in nice and close for you to see, we're exiting from this crystal here. I'm going to pick up one crystal, one pearl, there we go, one crystal, and another four millimeter pearl. Like I said, we're working in fives here. So if we say this is bead number one, the other crystal is bead number two. So see that one at the bottom? That's bead two, bead three, bead four, bead five. Into this same crystal that we're currently exiting from. So see that? Our thread's coming out there. So we're gonna thread into that bead to end up in exactly the same place. We pull it nice and tight all the way Get that tail thread out of the way if I can. There we are. Pull that tight. And you can see it creates two little groups of five here. Now we want to sort of bring them a bit more close together. So much like that diagram, here it is. We need to finish this step by passing through that first little crystal that we just added just now. So if we have a look, I added these four beads here. I was exiting this one. So we need to continue by going through this little crystal just here. Try not to get your thread caught, which I feel like I'm about to. Just make sure my tail's not in the way. There we go. And then just pull it all the way nice and tight. Come on now, Mr. Thread. There you go. Pull it all the way tight. It doesn't matter if it comes a little loose, because as we pull, it'll just bring everything back nice and firm. There we go. And there you go. You can see I've now got like a central core, if you were, if you will, of crystal beads down here. We're going to make a nice long core of these beads, and these are going to be sitting either side. So now that I'm coming out of this bead here, I'll show you the next diagram. So here we are. We're exiting from that same crystal in the center. We're going to pick up one crystal, one pearl, one crystal. And then we're going to join the pearl that we added in the previous sort of step to try and bring that into being our five beads. So I'll show you it just here. I'm going to pick up a crystal, a pearl, and a crystal. So where's that little pearl? Come on now, get on my bead mat. There we are, on my bead mat, on my thread needle. There we go. So there's, I'm exiting from this bead. This is going to be bead number one. Bead number two uh, is this little crystal, then a pearl, then a crystal. And then we're going to go into this little pearl here. So it's always the one that's on the lower side down. So see how we've got, we're coming out of this one and there's a pearl right here. We're not going into that pearl. We're going into this pearl over here. So I personally find that turning the work over at every step makes the task much, much easier. So you can see I've now got it so that it's on the same side that, that the hand that I am working for the needle is on. So I can thread those beads down, pass into that little pearl bead. That's bead number five in our little ring. And then pull it nice and tight. And then we have to remember we go through this little crystal so that we're back to where we started this step. And then as we did just before, we need to make sure we go through the first crystal that we added in this step, which is this sparkly little fella just here. So we're going to go inside that bead. And now you'll see our little central core of crystals. One, two, three, four crystals. I'll turn the work over. And I'm going to repeat the process again. So I'll pick up one crystal, one pearl, and one crystal. I'm going to go into the previous little um, pearl followed by crystal, which looks like this here. So I've just flipped my work over. I'm going to pick up a crystal because that's going to be the next one in my core. I'm going to pick up one pearl. 
Come on, Mr. Needle, there we go. And one more bicone. And then, like I said, we want to create another loop, so crystal, pearl, crystal, into the pearl, also into that same bead so that we end up back where we started this step, pull that all the way through, wee wee wee, all the way home, as they say, and now into that first crystal that we added in this step. So thread in there, I can see Maxine and Jermaine having a little conversation there in the chat. What are my mother and my girlfriend saying to each other? Good Lord. Um, there we go. So now I've got this one just here. I can flip this over and more or less I'm going to complete the next little step. So uh, essentially we're going to repeat this process until we have eight little loops that we've created. So if you have a look, the bottom left corner, there's loop number one, there's a hole in the center, up and to the right, 45 degrees, that's group number two, where there's a hole in the center, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight little groups is what we need. So if we have a look, so far, here's hole, wait a minute, where's my thread coming out of? Where is my thread? Oh, there, there it is. So yeah, if we have a look, here's group number one, group number two, group number three, group number four, and now we'll continue on. So every single time we pick up one crystal, one pearl, one crystal, and then we loop around through this pearl and into this little crystal. There we go, pull that tight. That makes number five. I'm gonna flip it over and now go into the first crystal that we added in that little group just there. Pull that tight. And now you can see I've got five. One, two, three, four, and five little groups, little holes where I can stab myself. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. You can see, oh no, I keep my fingers out of the way when I do it. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I'll make number six. So again, that loop, I pick up one crystal, one pearl, and one crystal, it's going to loop around to this short side here, so we're not going to join into the crystal that's right next to it. We're going to go to the one that's one below, through Mr. Pearl, up into that crystal that we started from, all the way through. Seems pretty easy so far, right? Flip it over into that first crystal that we just added, pull it tight, and now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six gaps. Let's do it again. Two more. So, one crystal, one Mr. Pearl, where are you? And one crystal. Through this pearl, down below, up into the bottom of this crystal here, so that we're coming back out where we started. I'm gonna flip it over to make my life easier. And then through that little crystal, the first one we added in this step, that's going to give us number seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll do it one last time. One pearl, uh, sorry, one crystal, one pearl, and one crystal. And again, through this little pearl just here, into this crystal, and pull that tight. Finally, through that last little crystal that we just added. There. And now you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I can see there's very important conversation. Susan says, sounds like some pretty high stake lamingtons. No pressure. No kidding. I tell you, there's, uh, there's nothing more important than a good quality lamington. A bad lamington, I tell you, it, it could be like um, one of those celebrity chef shows or, or uh, like The Apprentice. You're fired. No, not quite. Uh, but there you go. You can see I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in terms of diagram, 
that's where I'm at. So you can see I'm coming out of that very last little crystal so that I've got that nice central core of eight beads and I'm ready to turn it into that nice circular shape. So don't forget if you missed anything like Jan just says, she says back in business again, uh, she's missed quite a bit. Don't worry, Jan, I'm going to put the diagrams into the Bead Spider Facebook group, not the Facebook page, the Facebook group. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Also, I'll just point out to you, you can see it's a little bit loose in places like here and here and here and here. That doesn't matter. That's because currently we've sort of got our what will be a ball, a circle, uh, a, a sphere, uh, and we've got it flat. As you pull that into a, um, into a sort of ball shape, it's all going to pull together, but we can fix that at the end. Uh, but yeah, so here we go. Now that I'm at this point, I'll show you the next diagram. I've done it all flat, uh, just to sort of make it two-dimensional, a bit easier. I was just doing them relatively quickly, so I might go back and do a three-dimensional one later, but not today. So anyway, the next diagram looks a little bit like this. So I'm going to pick up one crystal, which is going to be my core bead, and then I'm going to go all the way around to the very, very bottom pearl, the absolute bottom-most pearl, and I'm going to thread through it. And this is the most important part that you need to be aware of. I'm going to thread through it from the center outwards towards the edge. So if I show you that down here at the bottom, I'm going to pick up one little crystal bead, and then I need to thread through this crystal away from my central core. So I don't want to thread through it this direction, like from, from out here towards the center. It's extremely important that you remember to do it towards the outside. So just ignore that little tail thread. I might poke it into the center so that it's out of the way so it doesn't confuse you or anything. There we go. So yeah, exiting here, I'm going to pick up one crystal and then I need to go into this one but in the direction away from our central core. So that's why the diagram, I go all the way around one direction so that you definitely see that we're not going to go that way and through that little end pearl. So here we are. This is the this is the step where you might make a mistake and confuse yourself and then go, I'm, I'm all lost, I don't understand. This is why. So you've got to be really careful. We're coming out of this little crystal here. We need to go into this pearl that direction, towards the outside. We're adding in an extra bead to our core. So through this little section here, like that, towards the outside. If I bring my thread around with that tail out of the way, you'll see it's going to pull it around my finger. See that? Pulling it together, and now it's got like a sort of a rounded shape. There we go. This is where I started from. Here's that little bead I've just added. And now you can see I need to pick up one little crystal. And much like in this diagram here, I need to go into the pearl that is just before where I started this step. So if we have a quick little look, that's going to be... This is coming out of this one here. I'm going to jump up and across. Wait, I'll rotate it so you can see it a little bit better. Or maybe I'll stick my finger in it so you can sort of see. Hopefully a little easier. Where's my pinky? Get my pinky in there so you can really see what's going on, hopefully. And now I need to join these two pearls together. So through this pearl here, into that one there it all the way and now I need to make sure that I create that little group of five beads so see that there's the pearl the two core crystal beads the pearl and the bead I've just added so I'll go through one central core bead two central core beads back towards where I was, 
into the pearl again. I want to go through this whole circle just to sort of make sure it's nice and firm. And I'm going to finish this step coming out of this little bead just here. So I'll show you very, very quickly where I'm up to. So pull that tight. And if I stick my finger inside there, hopefully you'll see it a little better. There you go. I've turned my little strip into a little ring. But again, still don't worry too much if it's looking a little loose in places. We can fix it at the very, very end. Now, let's look at our next diagram, shall we? So these little blue dots that you see there, this is where I have sort of where the connection is. So the, the, the top blue dot matches the bottom blue dot. They're sort of the same thing. That's why that pearl is only half a pearl and so forth. So essentially, now what I need to do is go through all of these endmost beads at the very end. So you can see one, two, three, four, five little crystal beads. I'm going to go through all of them once, almost twice, and then bring it back to sort of where I started. So if I show you, this is where I started this step. But you can see these two little crystals aren't joined. Every other one of our little central core crystals, which run all the way through the middle, they're not joined yet. So we need to join these two once we've finished adding these. So you can see the top of our little ball has a little, uh, it becomes a super cute star shape. You'll see it in a second, but we need to join them all to one another. So there's five little crystals along the top. We'll go one, through the first, through the second. Do you know what? I've got a cup of tea here that I haven't even had a sip of yet. Through the third, into the fourth. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought for a second I had the diagram still up and I was like, oh no, that'd be trouble. So through that one, I'm going to go through them again to make it nice and firm. Into this just here. Then here, and then through these two, because remember, we want to join these two center crystals together. So I need to get myself into a position so that I actually can. So I'll go through this one here. And if we look at that little diagram, you can see I sort of go through one crystal short down into the pearl. And then you can see I can thread into those central crystals again. So down this one here into this little pearl here. Down here. And now into this crystal and I'm in position where I can join them to each other. There we are. So that's going to sort of almost get us finished. Almost. So now I'll show you the next little diagram, shall I? So if you have a look, by the way, I should explain here. Hopefully you can see it. It might be a little bit small if you've got it on a tiny screen. So see where the, the blue triangle is. So I started at the top of that one crystal bead in the center. Then I went, followed that path, and it's where the blue triangle that's labeled with a one is. That goes all the way, jumps across to the other side where the blue little circle with the number one is. You follow that path. It becomes our triangle number two, which joins to our green little circle at the bottom, number two as well. You follow that up and you end where that red triangle is. Um, wait a minute. I just saw something. Oh, I see Maxine's put a, uh, a comment up of where I can get... where If you want to make some lamingtons uh, and celebrate my birthday with lamingtons at home, uh, there you go. There's a, a, good, a good recipe. But you need to make the, the sponge a day in advance. So the comment there, I think it's in Facebook. I think Jermaine might put it into YouTube. Here it is. Yes, Jermaine's put it into YouTube, I think. Hopefully you can follow that too. Uh, but anyway, 
Um, yeah, celebrate my birthday tomorrow with, with some lamingtons. Make some. I want to see. So yeah, uh, next little diagram now. Oh, bring myself back. Where are we? Here we are. So this one, I'm going to create the, the final little loop. Again, you can sort of see, you just follow the path as it is there. I just realized one of those beads needs to be fixed. I'll have to change that little diagram. That topmost bead should be um, colored because we're adding him in. Uh, so I need to go in and make sure I color those beads in. But anyway, so we're starting at uh, our little black, uh, little central core bit, where, which will then become that blue triangle number one. Then we're going to go sort of, essentially we're creating one of these little joins, one of the next little group to finish it off. So if we have a look, I'll show you it with this just here. So if you have a look, I need to create this shape just here. So I've got my core ones, a pearl, a crystal, and a pearl, and I need that here. So I've got my core ones, which I need to join them to each other. This is part one. That's bead one of our little join. This is the first pearl. We need a crystal here, and then our next pearl. And then that's going to create our group of five beads. So bead one, two, three, add a crystal four, into this pearl here is five. So starting here, I'll go into this crystal, which joins that central section into one. I need to make sure I don't forget to add my bead in as well, just before I add that crystal. So I'll, in fact, maybe I'll do that now. Let's go through this little pearl, pull that there. I'll grab myself a 10 millimeter bead. I've got a, a gray mother of pearl 10 millimeter bead, but you can use any 10 mil bead if you're using four mil. Uh, if you're using three mil, you might need. Uh, so if you're using four mil be uh, four mil beads, you need a ten mil pearl. Three mil beads, you might need like a uh, maybe a, an eight mil or maybe even smaller. Um, if you're doing like one where I've done it like this, where you do even bigger beads, you're going to need bigger core beads. So anyway, I'll pop this little bead inside here to hold everything in place. Don't run away, little ten mil. There we go, and. To make my life easier in terms of turning these into earrings, I'm going to try and align this little bead hole inside this group of crystals. So you can see I need five crystals on the top. We always work in five beads. So I'll pick up one little crystal here. So this is what this diagram is showing. I'm creating, whoops, didn't pop up. Here we go. I'm creating that final little group by sort of looping around here and I'm adding that bead there. So that's what this diagram shows. I might have to put some text to make it a bit easier to understand. But anyway, coming out of this pearl here, I'm going to go into this pearl just here. And that's going to create that little group of five beads. Here we are. One, two, three, four, five. Let it pull a little closer. And now I'll just loop around until I'm exiting from that bead that I just added. So through my sort of central ring of beads, pull that firm, go up into this pearl. And now there you go. You can see I've got my five beads at the top and I need to join them all one to the next. So one, to pull that tight, three, four. You can see I'm holding my thread in this finger here to try and get a nice firm tension. Five, pull that tight, go into that next bead to complete the circle. And now I'll go through them all once more to get it super firm. Try not to lose the top of your pearl just here either. Just rotate it into the middle there. And I'll continue around again. Because you get it, you want to try and get this nice and firm now. Through there. Into here. And you can start to see that there are places where the thread is a little loose. That last little circle that I made is a teeny weeny bit looser. So you can, at this point, go just around 
your little groups of five beads and tighten everything up if you want to make it nice and firm. You can see mine's fairly tight already though, which is good. It's a good sort of thing, good place to start. Just get that tail thread out the way. And just like I said, weave around until you're comfortable that it's nice and firm. If you've got a bead in the center, it's not such a big problem. But I'll show you a super cool little feature that I really like about this design is that if you look closely, I'll just tie this off in a second and then I'll show you. So if I pull this through here, get it nice and firm. If you can bring these two together, your tail thread and your working thread, you can tie them together. So I'm going to try and do that. I'll bring them together. That's a, the best way to get it nice and firm. Keep my tension nice and good. Oh, there's so many comments today that I have to scroll down. The uh, Usually it automatically scrolls for me, but once you get a certain number, I have to keep going down. What is everyone working on today, says Kay. She wants to know what everybody else has been making these days. Um, don't forget, of course, uh, it's the perfect time to get blingy. You can make all sorts of sparkly, crystally things because we've got our crystal sale and our seed bead sale still on. So, um, yeah, it's a good time. This is a good weekend if you want to make blingy things uh, with bead weaving. So I've just tied these threads together. Have I? Yes. Just get those nice and tight. And tie them again. So left over right, just like you would start your shoelaces. Where's that thread gone? There it is. This detail was hiding from me. Pull that tight. And now essentially I could just weave around until I'm ready to cut off my threads. So I am going to do that. Let's see, where am I? Here we go. I'll just weave through a few more beads. You can tie more knots if you want to, but I'm not going to bother because one, I'm lazy, and two, it's quicker for demonstrating, to watch, for you guys watching. You don't want to have to watch me just sitting here tying knots. So I'll just thread through there and give him the snip. Give those balls the snip. And now the next one. And there's a little something I'm going to show you that you can also do if you don't want to make earrings or if you don't have pierced ears, for example. I'm going to show you something fun that you can do with this as well. So if you had like a tiny bit of tiger tail or beading thread or whatever it is that takes your fancy, you could always turn this, that will do, into a necklace instead, or a bracelet or something. Just all you would need to do is, have I got a head pin? Yes, I do. I'll use a head pin. So just pretend that this is jewellery wire and you're making a piece of, uh, like a necklace. What you can always do is if you have... For example, the 6mm version of our little pearls. So there's the 4mm, here's the 6mm uh, Preciosa pearls, little Preciosa satin pearls, the 6mm version. You can always separate your little... Have I got tiger tail here somewhere? Apparently, oh yes I do, I do have tiger tail, great. I can show you with tiger tail. Let's get some of this tiger tail. We don't need to be so zoomed in anymore. So I'll just cut myself some tiger tail. So I'll just give myself a small enough little piece just here. So instead of doing it into earrings, in fact, I can show you with my even bigger one with the seed beads, which essentially I've used the same technique, but use seed beads in all of the gaps. You can use Whoops, where's that 6mm pearl? See, look, 6mm pearl just here. And thread it through, like so. Then thread... Ooh, nearly stabbed myself with a needle there. Through your little 
bead, feature bead. Keep that hole nice and central if I can. There we go. There's that little hole. So I'll thread through him next. This is if you wanted to do it as like a bracelet or a necklace or something. There we go. Slide that down. See, that fits quite nicely. Sort of in that little gap. It's a very good little spot to put it. Put that there. Use another little pearl. <laughs> Someone picked up on a, a very intentional joke that I made. I mean, do you know, when I'm making these streams, YouTube have a little thing that you have to, a little box that you tick that says, this stream is not made for kids. So uh, it's, a, it's different rules if things are designed for children or not. And it's a good thing I'm not clicking, yeah, it's designed for children with some of these jokes I'm making. See, look, you could even do it like this. This would make a, a nice addition to your earring if you wanted to do it like this. Could look really nice like that and have that as your earring. Um, otherwise, like I said, you can always thread multiple little balls side by side like this and that create like a sort of central feature piece. Here's an earring I made already. Like you could just sort of continue them along and have multiple little pieces like this. There you go, look. And make a like a pendant Say a central section on your on your like your necklace that you can attach with like a chain or you could just bead like this so that you've got lots of them you could put like the the larger ones in as well if you prefer like just thread him on so that you've got like a focal one in the center the bigger the bigger ball just that little bit bigger you can see it's nice and large uh which i quite like this one uh, but yeah i'll show you this cool i'll show you how to turn it into an earring now uh, so, there we go. Would look great if you used a chain to drop from the earring. Oh, that's a nice idea too, actually. You could very easily just like, especially because there's this little space just here, you could attach a tiny, tiny jump ring and hang multiple little chains from the bottom. Like, uh, like some of our shimmer chain, for example. We've got like a really nice sort of pinky shimmer chain. You could hang multiple little strands of it from the bottom and then have it on the top. Uh, in fact, you don't even need to use a jump ring here. You could use the bottom of your head pin. Clever Trevor over here. See, look, I've got my head pin. You could cut this in and off and turn it into an eye pin and thread it in there. And then you could hang all of those chains from the bottom. Great idea there by... Who was that? Wayne! Of course it was Wayne. Great idea there, Wayne. Uh, that's a really nice idea. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, so I'll show you how to turn it into an earring now. So if I was going to do that, I can just thread my head pin into the base, which, because it's got like a nice little ball pin there, that's going to just fill that gap and be hidden inside. See, look, you can't even see that it's there. I will, before I attach my little ear wire, you, I mean, you could just go straight to the ear wire if you wanted to, but I think it's going to look really nice. If I pop another crystal on there, slide that down, and sort of fill that little central section. See, like that? And now I've got my tools. I can make myself a little ear earring. So if I just... Bend this over so that it's a nice right angle. I can use my cutters, which are made from Ustnuthlost Leets. I don't know. I don't know why I tried to say it backwards. I guess just because it's written backwards for some reason. I thought, you know what, it'll be a fun... I just, you know, these things, they come to my mind sometimes, and I'm like, well, let's let's just say them. Give that a cut. There we go. So I've given myself just a small amount to work with. I'll bring in my nice Rudisper, uh, Rudisper Diab bead spider uh, little pliers there. Make my loop by 
getting it nice and close. You can see that is that right angle there and I can just keep it nicely pressed in and then I'll just roll it into being a nice little looped head pin. Got in the way, Mr. Bicone. There we go. Keep that in there. There we are. There's that little loop. And now I'm going to have to open that up. I just realized. Whoops. Here's my ear wire. Didn't think about that. There's this nice little ear wire. I think it's a really nice little design. I hope this is on the website here, but it looks lovely. It's a really lovely color, this one. So if I just use my pliers now, lucky I've got them here, I can just lever my head pin open by rotating that a few degrees, thread him on. Luckily there's no back and no front to worry about. There we go. Get that ear wire on there. Oh, I could have opened the ear wire, it seems. And then just position that back in there. And then ta-da! One lovely little ball earring. And these things here, by the way, they're adjustable, so you can stretch them open or closed if you want them more secure. See, like that? They're designed so that you can sort of bend them to be a bit more the shape that you want for it to be nice and secure. But anyway, there are my beaded ball earrings. I was gonna say, and here am I something else, but I won't say that. Ah, oh, my, uh, my uncle and auntie have just joined on. Uh, my uncle Paul and my auntie Roseanne, they said, hey Matt, it's now Saturday here in Australia, so happy birthday. Well, if I was in Australia right now, it would be my birthday already. So if he's watching, which he probably isn't, but I'll tell him too, my cousin James was born on my eighth birthday. Happy birthday, James. Uh, there you go. Hopefully, hopefully he's watching, but I doubt it. But thank you, Arnie Roseanne and Uncle Paul. Lovely to hear from you. Um, but yeah, there you go. There are my earrings, all finished, all done and dusted. Do them as a little ball. Do them however you desire. You could do them as a necklace. You could do them as a bracelet. But either way, I think they look fantastic. And they're super sparkly. These are I've, the colours I've used. It's like a, I think the Rosaline pink. The Rosaline pink little beads just there. And um, I've used the blush 4 mil glass pearls. Um, I just used a head pin. I used a 10 mil mother of pearl bead in there. And then just some ear wires as well. And that will give me my lovely finished pair of ear wires. A uh, pair, pair of earrings. So close that over. And there we go. All done, all dusted. How do we like that? So, um... <clears throat> Del Joe says, they look smashing. I'm glad you like them. And I assume that's a joke because I'm in the UK saying smashing. Uh, but yeah, thank you very, very much. So let me just show you real quick the website because I know you do want to see that uh, as always. So if I just pop that over. You can see if you want to get to the sale where you can get the crystals or if you want to get to the um, the beads, the seed bead sale, uh, you just head to our website, which is www.beadspider.co.uk. So, you know, bead and then that eight-legged thing that lots of people are afraid of. Type that in .co.uk and it'll take you to our homepage. If you want to get crystals, you can press the big button that says shop the crystal sale. If you want to get seed beads, you can click shop all my Yuki, shop all Preciosa or shop all Toho. Whichever is your favorite brand, click that button. Um, otherwise, just click the image. So I'm going to click the picture that says 600 plus products, 20% off crystals. It'll take you to this page here. You can get some of our micro crystals if you want. They're here. There you go, they're all on discount. Uh, there's only half the colors in stock at the minute, but we've got plenty of stock coming soon, so don't worry. Uh, they're on their way soon. Bicones, you can get two mil bicones, you can get three mil bicones, which are the precision shape, the four mil bicone strands, or the four mil precision bicones, they come loose. Um, six mil bicones, or the precision six mil. So the ones that I was using just now, if I show you, uh, here are the precision ones. I was using the the Rosaline color. This one just here, Rosaline. Uh, that one just there, 20% off, as you can see. 
Um, that's the one I was using, but if you prefer, you can also get the 4mm ones, which uh, you get... So you get 50 beads, uh, the rose quartz colour. It's the same colour, more or less. Uh, the Rosaline and the Rose Quartz, they're very, very similar. You can use either one. Uh, but this one, for the same amount of money, you get more than twice as many beads. So if you prefer uh, quantity, then get the, the strands. If you prefer the extra quality, get the precision bicones. But these are the same ones. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can, you know, be on your merry way. Choose whatever crystals you like. Um, as per the, uh, the actual instructions today, uh, if you click where it says view related products, see that there at the bottom underneath crystal beaded ball earrings, that picture, um, you can click on that and there you go. You can see there's the blush satin pearls. You can get the pistachio or the pastel lilac, the satin, the cream ones. Uh, there's your rosaline beads. There's lots and lots of different options that you can choose from. We've got some of the findings down here as well. We've got lever back ear wires, lots and lots of different things. This is if you don't have pierced ears, I think. These ones here. We've got some posts. Lots of different ones. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and the head pins are there too. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get that, you can. Um, last thing I'll show you though is if you've missed this video and you want to go back and rewind it, you can click on this big pink thing. Or if you missed last week's video, for example, where I used the bead spinner, see where it says easy beaded necklace with the bead spinner and the necklace. If you click on that, it'll take you to last week's video where you can learn, you can press play, and then you can watch me. You can just fast forward, by the way. You don't have to watch the tick down of three minutes. You can just jump straight ahead and fast forward and watch that tutorial whenever you want, anytime you want. Same with this one that we're using right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, if you want to get the products for that, they're there. If you want to get my Yuki beads, seed beads, it's all on these pages. We make it nice and easy for you guys, uh, for you to, to check them out. But if you haven't seen it before, if you scroll a little bit further, ah, there's our micro crystals. Uh, here, look, this is where you can get to our tutorial library. So you can get that there, or you can get it in the menu, um, which is just up here where it says kits and tutorials, video tutorials on the left there. So uh, just below patterns, see there's patterns, just below it, video tutorials and it will take you to where you can see all of the tutorials. We've got lots of live ones, you can load more. This one's quite similar to the uh, the one that I did with pinch beads, but this is slightly more complex. Um, load more, and then load more, just keep going, there's more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more. I think there's about 200 now, or something little fringe earrings, the beaded dresses. That was a popular video. But anyway, um, that's pretty much it for... Wait, let's go back to my face instead. That's pretty much it for today. Um, don't forget, if you want to go and get some, uh, the crystals are on sale, the seed beads are on sale. The diagrams that I used today, if you liked those ones, uh, these, these, these diagrams just here, we're going to stick them into a PDF. I wasn't going to put any text, but maybe I will. I'll just put some very basic text in there. And then that's going to be on our Facebook group. So if you haven't done that yet, go and subscribe to our Facebook group. Uh, make sure you share this video, like this channel as well, subscribe and all of that. Um, if you want to try out some of our other beading patterns where we do the whole process, the full thing, you can get five pounds worth of patterns as well. Um, there's a link in the description for that too. Um, but yeah, let's see. Who have we still got here? We have... Uh, uh, we've got... Ellie is here. She says... Ooh, where'd that comment go? Disappeared. There it is. She says, thank you for the demo. I'm glad you liked it, Ellie. Um, oh yeah, the competition. Oh, I nearly forgot. Thanks for reminding me. In our Facebook group, today is the last day. Uh, go on to our Facebook group. Uh, Sandy says enjoy your lamingtons. I, I hope I will. I hope I will. Um, yeah, go on to our Facebook group. We've got a competition that is ending today. So uh, we did one about a month ago. We'll do them every, we do them, you know, every sort of six week, six week rotation. Jump onto the webs, uh, the, the Facebook group 
and um, enter our competition. You can you can win things. It's it's like a, a design competition. Today is the last day. You don't have to design something new. Uh, we had lots of lovely entries from last time, uh, but if you want to, it's our enchanted. Uh, did I put the picture? Maybe even let's have a look. Did I put a picture? Come on now, where are you? Uh, it's the. Oops. Uh, where are you? Why are you not working for me, Mr. Thing? No, maybe not. No, doesn't look like it. Oh, well, it's um, Midsummer Night's Dream is the theme for our, our, our competition this month. So go, go enter, quick, now, click the link. The, vi the video's over, you don't need to watch me anymore. I'm just going to be saying goodbye. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, Kay is still here. Um, Ellie's here. Jane is here. She says, thank you. Fab tutorial as always. Happy birthday for tomorrow. Thank you. Um, Jackie says, happy birthday for tomorrow. Thanks for watching, Jackie. Um, for all of those who are new, she says, uh, you know, thanks for watching. I'm glad that you could join me. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, check out our newsletter as well. Sign up to our newsletter. Get get the five pounds worth of free patterns and uh, make sure you get our emails so that you know uh, when, when we're going to be going live. Because I go live every Friday. Uh, sometimes we do more than that, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, as Jermaine says, the competition ends tonight and will be announced next Friday in my next live stream, I guess, if I'm going to be doing a live stream next Friday. Um, so make sure you get your competition entries in. I can, I can hide my... There you go, I've got a bead spider mouth now. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed today. I'm off to have a lovely weekend i think you know doing all sorts of birthday things with maxine and with the family and all of that um but yeah thank you for joining me i hope you've had lots of fun i hope you learned some new stuff i hope you like the diagrams uh and i hope you enjoyed the tutorial all in all uh but yeah have a lovely weekend and i'll see you all next time let's just make sure i haven't forgotten anything yes dora says happy birthday and uh she's definitely gonna be making a pair post pictures uh, into our Facebook group. I want to see these sorts of things, Doris. Uh, or anyone else. Post pictures. We love it. But yeah, thanks all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Have a lovely weekend slash week, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye. Oh, no. Wait. And bye-bye. <laughs>